Today I'm going to show you how to make a basic surfactant uh, sample. This is a very basic formula. You're required to prepare this if you're studying our Diploma of Personal Care Formulation. You're required to prepare this as part of one of your practical samples. Uh, if you're studying another course with us, you can also practice with this very basic formula to get you familiar with making a surfactant product. Now there are many ways that surfactant products can come together. Again, today is a very basic formula just to get you started on surfactant formulation. So first of all, we're going to start by measuring out the water. And to this, I'm going to add the sodium lauryl sulfate. Now this is a 90% concentrate. You need to look at the actual dilution of the surfactants you select for your formulas to calculate out how much you will use in your particular samples. In this particular formula, we do provide an amount for you to use. and that's based on the 90% concentrate. So you can also get this as a liquid or a paste at different concentrations. Now I'm just gonna heat this gently until they dissolve. One of the important things when you're creating samples of surfactant products is that you will get a lot of bubbles if you introduce a lot of air. So all stirring should be done quite slowly uh, and gently so that you don't introduce too much air into the product. You will invariably introduce a fair bit of air in lab sized samples, but you don't want this to be too excessive. Remember the purpose of using surfactants is to get foam and bubbles. So that's why you need to be particularly careful with these materials. They will foam up significantly. I am stirring relatively gently. You can still see I'm, I'm getting quite a few bubbles. That really can't be helped. So all the needles have nearly dissolved now. So when we say heat gently, that's a typical example. We're keeping that heat reasonably low and controlled. Not like when we're trying to create an emulsion where we need to melt waxes. This is more just to help with dissolving. Okay, now I'm going to add the phase B materials. And again, going to stir relatively gently so that I don't get too many bubbles. But I do need to make sure that everything's combined homogeneously, that is evenly. You can see I'm starting to get a bit of a gel form. I've also got quite a few bubbles in there, but that again can't be helped. When you're creating a surfactant sample in the lab. Now I'm just gonna add the phase C materials, and then I'm gonna talk you through a very important step with pH adjustment.
Now you can see I have started to form a bit of a gel, but it's still far too runny to be suitable for a consumer. Really, really, really important when you're making your surfactant samples that you do not give up at this point because altering the pH of your formulas will have a dramatic impact on viscosity, sometimes more so than other formulas you'll create. So at the moment, you've seen how runny that is. I'm going to now adjust the pH. Again, if you have access to a pH meter, definitely use your pH meter. It will take more accurate measurements, but just using the materials you've got in your pack, you get the strips. So we dip it in. And we have a look, pH is, is definitely too high. So we need to take that pH down. And we do that with some citric acid. Now, when you're adding uh, citric acid or sodium hydroxide to adjust your pH, you can't necessarily know how much you're going to need. Each formula can vary significantly. You might only need one drop for certain formulas. You might need, you know, mil, one mil to three mil for other formulas. Um, so you just add a small amount. Now you can see as I'm adjusting pH, I am introducing now a fair bit of bubbles um, to, the, to the formula. Again, we need to let these dissipate. You can see the viscosity has changed slightly. We need to check the pH again. In this case, I've taken a little bit, oh, it's, it's about where we need it to be um, for this particular formula. Actually, it's a little bit long. I'm going to take that pH up just slightly. You can go up or down slightly if you need to. Again, this is why using a, an electronic pH meter is best if you have access to one. What you will see is the product will start to thicken. So already you can see the viscosity now is quite different to how we started before. So with further adjustment, you'll then get the viscosity required. As an example, and also to show you at the moment, this looks like a bowl full of bubbles. But you'd cover that in a plastic wrap, come back the next day, and this is actually what you'll end up with, this viscosity and this clarity, it will be this clear. Now that's not to say that all surfactant samples you create will be this clear, but this particular formula will end up that clear and will end up that viscous. So again, when you make a sample today, you'll need to cover it in, in plastic wrap and come back and evaluate it the next day to see what it's like properly. Now if you've used a lot of gums and polymers in your surfactant formula, you may need to wait an extra day for all of the air to fully come out of the formula. This doesn't happen in a large scale manufacturing sense because the mixer blades are always kept well below the surface of the product, so air isn't pulled into the product as you're mixing it. But in a lab size sample, it's very hard not to pull air in or add air to the formula while you're mixing. And of course, adding air to surfactant formulas will create the bubbles. So again, don't throw the baby out with the bath water. You need to evaluate the sample the next day to see what it's really like. And that is what you'll end up with. Bye.